Alright, all welcome to or welcome back to the channel, whichever way the situation may be. In today's video, we're going to be overclocking the CPU on the Gigabyte B550 or Pro motherboard. i got to throw this disclaimer out there. This is a tutorial or a how-to. If you decide to do this with your own components, you hold full responsibility. I am not responsible if you damage any of your components by trying to do this. Today's example, we are running the Ryzen 5 5600G, which yes, it is an APU, but we're only overclocking the CPU cores. I've ran Cinebench R23 three different ways on this CPU. I ran it at stock with the RAM stock settings at 2133 MHz. Then I boosted the RAM speeds up to 3600 MHz to see how much better performance you can get out of the CPU just by overclocking your RAM. And then we're going to also show you how to overclock your CPU cores on this processor and see what we can get out of it and see what kind of benefits we can get out of the Cinebench R23. Now within the test, I only ran one single loop of Cinebench R23. If you're going to actually overclock this system and run it stable, you may want to run the Cinebench R23 for about 30 minutes or so, just to make sure it's good and stable before you start doing anything else with your system. So let's flip you over here and we'll see how to get this done and see what kind of performance boost you can get out of the 5600G on this motherboard by overclocking the CPU cores. All right, guys, and to start out, we're going to get a baseline test here. As you can see, it is running stock. It is running the base speed of 3.9. The 5600G, it is to boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. The only thing I have changed is I did turn on XMP because the uh, Ryzen 3 5000 series does like the 3600 megahertz speed of the RAM. All right, so let's get hardware info pulled up here. Right there, hardware info. We were run sensors only. And to uh, get our numbers, we're going to be using Cinebench R23. And so we'll get that pulled up here. All right, guys, let's get Cinebench R23 going here. And pull up hardware info here. And we'll check our temperatures and our usages and see what this thing's boosting up to by itself. All right, guys, that's finished up. I didn't run the 10 minute test, I just don't want to waste that much time, but it looks like this time around with the 3.9 gigahertz with the OC RAM, we got 10,766. Before we OC the RAM, we got 10,398. 10, so just by o'clocking that RAM gave us quite a bit of a performance boost. We looked at the temperatures, it was reading almost 83C on the package. And it looks like it was reading almost the 4.4 gigahertz. It was getting up to 4.36 gigahertz. That was the max. So now let's uh, go in here and show you how to overclock this thing and uh, see what we can get this one up to. Go down to your start button. Go up to your power button. Go to your restart and start tapping the delete key. All right, here we are in the BIOS. As you can tell, we are running BIOS version F14D. We do have G skewers with XMP enabled. So I would get this thing overclocked. You over here to advanced mode or push F2 on your keyboard. Okay. And if you're going to do any manual overclocking on your CPU, you do need to turn off PBO, Season Boost Overdrive. You need to double click on this and disable this. That way it don't try to override what you what you put in manually. The CPU clock ratio is on auto, which is 39. This thing turbo is up to 4.4 on its own, so we'll try 47. That'd be about 300 megahertz over what it'll boost on its own. We're gonna go down here to CPU B core. I don't like the auto settings. A lot of times the auto settings will boost it a lot higher than what it should be. I'm gonna double click on auto, and I'm gonna put in my favorite 1.35 volts and hit enter. Alright, once you get that set up, go up here and hit save and exit. Save and exit. And it shows you everything that you changed. You turned off your precision boost. Put your CPU core frequency up to 47, which is 4.7 gigahertz. And your CPU V core is now up to 1.352B. And you hit yes, and hopefully you can boot back into Windows. Alright guys, and we're back on the desktop. Go in the task manager here, see what we got. And your CPU is now reading 4.7 gigahertz. Okay. Your memory is just 3600 megahertz. So we'll pull up hardware info here. Alright, now our car volt is hitting 1.35 volt. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up Cinebench here. 
We want to run, we want to run a single run of it. We don't want to do the 10 minute or 30 minute stretch test on it. I don't want to put that much time into it. Okay, 4.7. Let's see if it'll finish it. Hardware info pulled back up here. I really want to. Nope. See if it will recover. It did recover, but that's unstable overclock. So we'll go back into the BIOS here and we will turn her back a little bit. Reset. Keep tapping to the leap. Okay, here we go. Put us right back into the tweaker. 4.7 wasn't stable. We'll go with 46. Try 46, which would be 4.6 gigahertz. Go up to save and exit. Save and exit setup. Yes, went down from 47 to 46. Alright, let's open up task manager here. Performance, CPU, or 4.6 gigahertz. There we go back to hardware info. Okay, there we go. And we're going to open up uh, Cinebench. Alright, we're going to try this again at 4.6. 4.7 wouldn't run it. It crashed as soon as it hit the start button. So, try 4.6 here. And it is started. Nope, four point six ain't stable. We getting closer to it being stable, at least to start us in the bench R23 that time. Alright, so back into the BIOS we go. Power, restart, delete. Alright, here we go. 46 wasn't stable. So we're down at the 45. Hit save and exit. Hit save and exit setup. I uh, don't think we changed with the clock ratio. When you hit yes. Alright. Go to task manager. Make sure it's took. That's the memory. CPU. At 4.5 gigahertz. Boot up hardware info 64. Go to Cinebench R23. And we're going to go over here and hit start. See if we'll finish R23. Put hardware info back on top. Alright, and it finished at 4.5 gigahertz. Kind of surprised me, because that ain't much of an overclock, because the, uh, the PBO enabled it was going up to almost 4.4 gigahertz. Um, as you can tell, it was up to 1.35 volt. Um, it was hitting 4.49 gigahertz. So basically 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, the max temperature on the package was 88.1. That's getting awful high, but we are running stock heat sink, so it's that can be expected for that little heat sink. So you definitely want a better heat sink on it. And our final numbers in uh, Cinebench was 11265. Like I said, for some reason it didn't remember my other, my other runs. So I'll have to look back at the footage and see what I actually got or how much of an improvement we got by overclocking it, if any, which I don't think would be much. It's only a 100 megahertz overclock, so I don't think we did much better than the Cinebench R23 scores. Let me get reset up here, guys, and uh, I'll come up with a conclusion to the video for you. All right, all, that's the way you get that processor overclocked. I didn't get much out of mine. PBO takes it up to 4.4. I got mine up to 4.5 stable. I think why I sent a bench didn't remember my scores at stock speeds was due to the fact that it crashed at 4.7 and 4.6. I think that's why I didn't remember my scores. Speaking of the scores, just by overclocking the RAM from 2133 megahertz up to the 3600 megahertz, we've seen an increase of 368 points from Center Bench R23. That was a pretty good performance boost just by upping the speed or turning on the XMP profile of the RAM, which is very easy to do. And by overclocking the CPU by that little 100 megahertz, we got about 499 point difference in Center Bench R23, which makes it worth the while to be able to go in there and overclock them. Now, some people say the 100 megahertz overclock ain't going to be a big performance boost or you're going to really tell on everyday performance, which you just have to try both ways and see what you actually feel about or how you feel about it. Some people can tell the difference, other people can't. 
It's personal opinion. It don't take very long to do like I showed you, but I think that's a pretty good little boost, especially for being an APU. The temperatures on the CPU stayed under control, and that was using the stock heat sink. But the temperatures wasn't the determinant factor in my test today. It was just the fact that the CPU silicon laundry just wasn't that good. Yours may overclock, but it may not overclock quite as well. And this applies to any CPU out there, not just the 5600G, but this goes for any processor you want to put in this motherboard. It's pretty well just like overclocking any other CPU on the Gigabyte motherboard. If you like this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. There's also a comment section below. I go through them every week and here on my live stream Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. If you really like this kind of content and want to be notified next time I put out a video I go live here on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. There's also links in the description below for Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to come over there and follow me. I don't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in, show you what's coming up on the channel. If there's any information about my live stream, if I got cancer or change time, I swear you also get that information. With all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.